Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make some fun and colourful pictures using yarn on canvas. As a knitter I have a plentiful supply of yarn and I thought it would be a nice DIY idea to make some tactile art. I personally found it to be a very relaxing craft and it's one of those things that you can make as intricate or as simple as you like. To do this project yourself you're going to need a selection of yarns. The wider the selection of yarns to choose from, the better. I had quite a collection already and I used mostly DK or worsted weight, but also used some chunky and super chunky weight as well. If you're wanting to make these artworks fairly quickly, then using chunky or super chunky yarn will definitely speed things up. If you don't already have a selection of yarn, I would definitely recommend going to eBay. You'll often find packs or bags of yarn where it's basically yarn scraps or small balls of yarn in colours that all go together. You'll see here that I have a bag of small balls of yarn in different colours like white, orange and brown and that was bought off eBay. And of course another thing you're going to need is canvases. I used four mini stretched canvases, each measuring 5 by 7 inches. Bear in mind that the larger the canvases you use, the longer it's going to take and the more yarn it's going to need. I only paid $2.99 for this pack of four canvases and if you're in the UK, I would recommend looking in Hobbycraft and the works. And some other things you're going to need include a pencil, some acrylic paints, clear drying glue such as PVA glue or Aliens Tacky Glue, some cheap paintbrushes, some scissors and some paper. Okay, so the first step is to design your canvases. I just did a quick doodle of the layouts I wanted on a post-it note, as you can see here. You want to come up with a picture that can be split into sections or segments. I chose a Mondrian inspired color block design, a wave and the sun. I personally think simple and bold works the best. And then all you need to do is transfer your designs onto the canvases using a pencil. Here you can see me drawing the wave picture onto my canvas. You'll want to do this quite faintly. Once I drew the outline, I split the wave into sections. This is so that the final artwork doesn't end up as one block of colour. Then take your acrylic paints and fill in the segments, first making note of the yarn colours that you have available. You'll want to paint using colours similar to the yarn colours you'll be adding on top. As you can see I painted the white sections white, but you can just leave these sections as blank canvas if you wish. Also make sure that you carry the painted design around onto the sides of the canvas as well. Even if it's not realistic, pick a variety of colours or shades of one colour for the segments and get creative. Next was the Mondrian artwork which consists of stripes and blocks of primary colours. I painted the blocks of colour first and then I left them to dry. Then later I painted the black stripes. Don't worry about getting the stripes perfect and straight, these just act as a guide. If I needed to make them perfectly straight I would use masking tape to help me, but in this instance it's unnecessary. And finally for the sun artwork I used the same method again. So pencil outline, then paint the sections different colours to represent the different yarn colours. If you're wondering why we're painting the canvases when we're just going to put yarn over the top of them, it's because the pieces of yarn are going to have gaps in between them, so we will see the canvas underneath. And it just looks so much more effective when you have a painted background rather than having the blank canvas show through. Then once the canvases are dry, it's time to add the yarn. So first put some PVA glue into a small pot. 
Then use a cheap paintbrush to apply this glue onto one of the vertical black stripes. I'm going to work on the Mondrian first because it consists of only straight lines and is therefore the easiest. Then take some black yarn and add lengths of it to this glued stripe. You can add individual lengths of yarn to do this or like me you can use one long length and just loop it around above and below the stripe. Make sure to cover the painted stripe below and try and get the pieces of yarn to lie closely together. Then use your scissors to cut off the loops and excess yarn above and below the stripe. This should leave you with a neatly covered stripe. Then do the same for the other vertical stripe. Then it's time to do the same with the horizontal stripes. Don't overlap the yarns, but instead split the horizontal stripes into sections. The next step is to fill in the blocks of colour. So first apply glue to one of the coloured areas. Start at one corner of the block and go back and forth all the way down to the bottom of the block to fill it with yarn. You will also need to go round to the sides of the canvas. Then use your scissors to carefully cut off the excess yarn. Repeat these steps for all of the blocks of colour. For the wave artwork we're going to use the same method as we did for the Mondrian. This artwork is perhaps a little bit more challenging because the shapes are varied and aren't all rectangles and squares. I first covered the sun in the corner with yellow yarn. It's best to start at the bottom of the side of the canvas, then go over the top of the canvas in a curved line, then down the other side of the canvas. Just keep going back and forth until you reach the very corner. For the waves, I wanted a more interesting frothy effect. So I used fluffy mohair yarns for the wave itself. Again, I began on the side of the canvas and I first outlined the shape of the segment. I then mostly used individual strands of yarn rather than one long piece and tried to place them so they followed the flowing lines of the wave. Each piece was attached as close to the tip of the wave as possible along the wave shape and then onto the side of the canvas. For the three curved sections at the bottom, I started at the right hand side of the wave shape with individual strands. In the lower section, as I got to the bottom left hand corner, I had to cut the strands shorter and shorter in order to fill in the shape. And as a last step, I covered the bottom edge of the canvas with yarn. I then moved on to the sun picture and what's challenging in this artwork is that the sections are mostly wider at one side compared to the other. The sun semicircle is simple enough though, just start on the side and outline the shape first. Then go back and forth making smaller and smaller arcs of yarn until you reach the centre line. A few of the lower sections can just be treated like normal rectangle shapes. But for the sections around the sun that are not simple rectangles, first add a few individual strands along both outer lines of the section. Then add more strands in the space in between. Try and fill up this in between space in a balanced way so that the finished sections look as symmetrical as possible i.e. add a strand on one side of the space, 
then on the other side, then the other side again, and so on. The yarn strands will likely end up making a kind of V-shape. And for the last canvas, I'm going to show you a different way of making some art. Basically, I didn't plan what design I was going to create, and instead I just made it up as I went along, in order to make an abstract artwork. The easiest way to start, I think, is to add two or three spirals or coils of yarn to the canvas first. Then you can just get creative. Try and place colours of yarn next to each other that either go together or contrast nicely. And experiment with different types of yarn. Keep making little random shapes and squiggles and outlining everything to build a complete picture. As you can see, I ended up with a flower shape, some squiggles and polka dots, and something that looks a bit like an avocado. Then to finish, I used some white super chunky yarn to add a border around the sides of the canvas. And that's it, you now have a unique collection of mini artworks. I really hope you enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching.